Thanks. Uh, thanks, Todd. Uh, hi, my name is John Brownlee. Um, this is a short piece that I wrote, a monologue called Saying Goodbye to Dad. Uh, this is an excerpt from it. Of course I remember him. I just don't remember him the way you do. Well, I mean, for you, he was the model parent, wasn't he? He was always there. He'd show up to your football games, cheering from the sideline. He'd take you out for ice cream after you'd won. You were always his favourite. Did I love him? That's a stupid question. I mean, of course I should love him. He was my dad too. But let me ask you this. What do you remember after those games when you lost? We'd come straight home, right? Without ice cream and dad would go straight to the fridge for a beer and you'd go upstairs, put on Radio 1 and play with your Meccanos. Dad would be sat down in his chair watching a game and I would I would help mum with dinner with me as Lackey by getting him more beer. I used to count how many he was on because he was usually around the fourth bottle he'd start getting loose and if United were winning or not we could determine what direction he'd be going. Towards the end it seemed like every Saturday he'd turn and it would we would usually start with the TV, he'd scream at all the players, and the moment either Bob or I would, would step in, he'd turn on us and get right in our face. He tells us we were worthless and lucky we'd have such a great provider of a husband and father. At times, we could calm him down, we'd switch off the TV, get him another beer, and, but there were other times we couldn't. He was smart, you know, never the face, always the body. He said he wanted to tuck me up, but but mum, he said she deserved it, and I, I just couldn't take that. The one time I did try and stop him by taking a few punches, I was off school for a week. Yeah, that was when I was shit blood. It, it wasn't a dodgy curry. The day after he, he got himself out of bed, his only words were to me, good game last night, so. Thanks, yeah. Taipei Shorts is a, is a grassroots uh, theatre collaboration based in Taipei. Uh, we're comprised of just local talents, really, writers, directors, performers, sound composer, lighting technicians. Um, yeah, it's, it, it started back in 2018, at the end of 2018. It was, it was a change in Taipei. Uh, it was uh, a producer, director, book hall, who'd been in Taiwan for about 20 years, and he was leaving. And he had created this fantastic theatre community in Taiwan. Um, and he, he'd, do, he'd do acting classes on a Monday. He would do directing, directing workshops. Um, and he'd also produce plays as well. So he just left this huge hole when he left in July. And myself and other people, other talents, were just... We didn't know what to do, you know, we were misplaced, I think, for want of a better word. And uh, and that was really where I came up with it. The shorts, we, we produce short plays, so it's a great opportunity to have a lot of people involved. Um, we've had 45 participants, I think, since we started. We've produced 21 plays, so it's, it's an opportunity to get uh, the local community involved as much as we can. Uh, that, that's an interesting question. I mean, you, you've got to be subjective and objective as well. I mean, personally, I like, I like dramatic plays. Um, the last, I, I chose a dramatic play and I, I directed the dramatic play last time. Um, but, you know, it's important. To, we, we're doing short plays, so it's important to get, try and get a balanced uh, play bill. Um, so, you know, in, in the last one we had, we had a slice of life play, we had a dramatic play, we had like a farcical play, uh, we had a satirical play. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to get a balance and, and try and put yourself in the audience's shoes. Um, also because we are grassroots, that is something to think about because uh, money is an issue. Everything is funded out of out of my pocket at the moment, um, so it's important to uh, choose plays that you can really put on anywhere. Uh, our, our basic brief is 
a minimalist minimalist set and one to four characters. Okay, so um, as I say, we're dealing with directors. Uh, some of the directors have an idea of who they want to cast in the play. Some of the uh, directors don't have an idea. Uh, so that is when we'll hold up auditions. Um, and really, we ask the auditionees to ask for a one to two minute, two, two pieces. Um, contrasting is great, so possibly one dramatic and one comedic in style, uh, ranging between one to two minutes in length. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, I mean, which, for the last play, for example, there were five different plays, so five different directors. So really, uh, as a producer, I just leave it up to the directors to choose their time when they want to, when they want to rehearse. The great thing about short plays is that you might not need as much time as you would do um, doing a longer piece, a two-hour, a two-hour show, a two-hour production. So they can work on their individual segments maybe once or twice a week. It totally depends on the director. Um, but towards the end of the when we're getting into the performance uh, week, we will all come together and then we will organise everything so we can we can try and make it as seamless as possible for the actual performance. Um, when I directed last time, I, I uh, we we rehearsed our performance once a week, and then the last month we were we were meeting twice a week for two hours. Uh, but but it, it depends on availability as well. There was another play where nobody could get together till the final month, um, a month before the performance, and they were meeting two or three times a week. So it, 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 of course it depends on availability as well. This is this is not really we're not doing anything paid. It's just for the love of theatre and for the love of performing and for the love of having your work. So we're not demanding that anybody, you have to be here at this time, it's just what's available and when everyone's available. So it really can vary from director to director. And if the people are, if the actors are ready, if they're ready, if they've learned their lines, you know, fantastic, that makes everything easier for the actual rehearsal process. If they don't, then that can take longer. Yeah, so I guess it's on a case-by-case -case basis for that. Uh, if you've got money, <laughs> it helps. Um, I think uh, the, the first place we had was Red Room. Uh, that, that was in 2019. And, you know, they've been one of our collaborators ever since. It's not a, really a theatre place, but it was a performance space, which was great for the first one. Um, and then after that, uh, I did a lot of searching around Taipei, just looking for some venues. Uh, generally, they're, they're quite expensive um, for what I was looking for. As I say, everything's funded out of pocket at the moment. Uh, but we were fortunate enough to have somebody um, with a connection at, at a university, uh, through Ren University. And, uh, and so we, we struck up a relationship with them. Um, but I mean, things that you have to think about, but, but you need to come prepared for any venue, what dates you're looking for, how much time do you want to spend in the place, um, what's your budget, do they have a lighting box, do they have a sound box, are you allowed to store things there, is there a dressing room there, um, are you, do they have props or anything like that, so these are all sort of questions you, you've got to think about. Um, also, if you work on a budget, we, we, it was a Catholic university, so we couldn't sell any alcohol on the premises, which uh, we could do when we were at the bedroom. So that was an additional uh, revenue that we, we were not uh, bringing in. So yeah, I, I guess you just got to find out what works best for you. I think for me, it was the, of our last show, it was when we sold out. I think that was when we packed out, I think it was 90, 
90 odd people in there and we packed it out and this was just after uh, COVID, the first round of COVID and uh, Taiwan had lifted restrictions so everyone was fully masked up and everything and, we, and you know kudos to my wife and everyone else but yeah I think that was just to have, just to share share the hard work of all the performers with so many people I think that was that was one of the best moments. I think um, delegating. I think delegating is is important. I'm I'm a bit of a control freak. It's it's a behavioural problem that I'm working on. So uh, yeah, it's certainly. Delegating the first the first Taipei shots, um, I was producing, and then I was going to do the sound. But I ended up doing producing, directing, doing the sound, and also doing the lighting on the actual uh, days of the performance, and also dressing the venue as well and setting up all the venue. So yeah, definitely delegation. You can't do it all by yourself. There are plenty of passionate people who want to get involved in theatre in some form or another, so uh, work with them. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who will be happy to, to work on the project. Yeah, sure, thank you. So, uh, to all the other theatre companies in Taipei, so we've got Barry Hall, uh, Barry Hall's theatre company, um, Elsewhere Theatre, we have the Pandemic Resistance with Stu Glenn and Jamie Huss. Uh, we have Fig, Formosa, uh, Improv Group. Um, we have Ben McClinnett and uh, Fight, Fight, uh, Stage Fight. Uh, all these, all these theaters, all these theater companies are coming back now, and it's, it's great to see that. And hopefully, uh, Taipei can be a, a hub for uh, English language theater in Asia.